Imagine having the ability to know what the stock market is going to do before it does it using the power of Twitter. We are not joking. One guy has actually done just that. He and his research team published their findings in the Journal of Computational Science. Johan Bolin, a professor at Indiana University, joins us now. Uh, Johan, I think first question has to be, what on earth sparked this idea? Well, in general, we're very interested in the notion of collective mood states, right? As a society, can we be cranky one day, happy <laughs> the other day, really uh, sad the other day? And uh, we uh, developed a methodology to measure those mood states from people's tweets, from how they formulate their particular tweets, the kind of words that they use, et cetera. And, and then we were very interested in, in validating our results by looking at whether they matched yeah. what people found in other areas. And so we started correlating it to the Dow Jones Industrial Average and found this really interesting correlation. Well, what you found was that Twitter's collective mood predicted a market shift three days in advance of that shift with about over 80% accuracy, right? That, that's exactly what we found, yeah. So what we did is we took the fluctuations in the mood state and then we compared them to fluctuations in the Dow Jones Industrial Average closing values uh, three or four days later uh -huh. and we found a statistically significant correlation between the two, that's right. So in, a, in as simple terms as you can, uh, explain the methodology to me. I know that you guys looked at six different mood states. That's right. So what, what our algorithms do, so the computers rate these tweets. We don't do that manually. Mm -hmm. And the computers read through millions of tweets looking at grammatical patterns, uh, particular terms that they use, combinations of terms, etc. And for that entire day, they build a picture of whether the public is either uh, particularly happy or uh -huh. sad, particularly anxious versus calm, so along these six dimensions. And then these six dimensions can then be used to predict whether the, the, the market will uh, move up or down three or four days later. So I know that you're continuing to study this. What other outstanding questions do you have at this point in time that you, that you want to look into, that you plan to look into, that would, would make this even more foolproof? Well, I think the, the, um, the, the most basic issue here is understanding why we're observing this correlation. That's really the million-dollar question. And a lot of people have asked me about this. And I also think a lot of people in the financial industry are unwilling to use something that they fundamentally don't understand. And we don't fundamentally understand how it's possible that, that fluctuations in the Twitter mood state could correlate with the fluctuations in the market. So to understand that kind of connection and to develop models that could explain why we're making these observations would be, uh, is very important to us. The London-based hedge fund did license this from you over the summer. You said you have an, some other partners as well. Who is using this now? Well, I, I think it, uh, you know, I, perhaps I shouldn't comment of that, uh, on that because we've got very strict confidentiality, uh, confidentiality agreements that we'd like to abide by, but uh, there's quite a few parties interested in this data for obvious reasons because it could give you significant edge to, uh, you know, uh, against uh, the market. Okay, so final question. Let's say that you, you're on to something here. How much longer are you going to be a university professor? I think for quite a while. <laughs> I really like my job here at Indiana University. So no matter how much you might be able to sell this for. No, I, I think that, you know, the dean owes me a good raise, but other than yeah. that, <laughs> I think we're, I think I'm going to stick around.